Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle with RR Buildings and we're here in what has been dubbed the best house playlist here on my channel. And we're at the point now where all the framing is done. Actually, I think Greg is wrapping up. We're wrapping up some minor blocking for drywall, that sort of stuff. And the electrical has been 99% finished. And I thought, man, I've gotten a ton of questions about this house, about the Myrex, the insulation, about how we're going to do the electrical, the plumbing, just a, a plethora of questions. And I wanna take a minute here this morning, we're gonna do a quick video and we're gonna go around this house and answer a lot of those common questions for you guys right now. The number one question that we got, especially after we started installing our air control layer, which is the Sega Myrex was, how are you guys going to do your electrical, your plumbing? And I think that's because typically people are used to this form of construction. This is a stick frame wall. We're at 16 inches on center. And when the walls are up, your electrician or plumber comes through and they rough all of that in, right? So those utilities are installed. Then you're gonna come through, if it's an exterior wall, you're gonna insulate the wall. Then you're gonna do your, a lot of times a poly or a vapor barrier over top of those boxes. And the problem is that's a lot of work for the detailing. If you want to do a good job to air seal all of your boxes, your plumbing penetrations, your windows, because as soon as the drywall goes on and then the drywaller takes his little roto zip tool and he zips around a box or cuts out a window, it's going to damage that air control layer. That is why I think post frame is amazing because take a look at this. Now that we have the details done, I think you can definitely see. So right here, this is a post. Over here in the corner, we have another post. In the middle of this, there is no framing, nothing. We have our outside girts that look just like these girts here. That is what our structural sheathing is attached to. That is our exterior, like it's gonna be our air barrier, stopping any wind from coming into the building and obviously moisture, but it's also breathable on the outside. So if any moisture is on the inside of those weather logic panels, it can breathe out and not gonna stay wet with condensation on the inside of the wall. Now, when we come to the inside, we've got a, a full wall. This whole eight foot section is nothing but R21 rock wall. Now, the benefit to post frame is that that gives us a true R value through this entire segment. If you were doing a stick frame, this is gonna be insulated, this is gonna be insulated, but each one of these studs has the potential for thermal bridging, right? So you don't have the same R value every 16 inches as you do in this area right here. Whereas with post frame, we've got an eight foot bay. I talked to a building scientist who ran a bunch of numbers for me, and he said that a post frame structure, the way we build, has an 8% thermal bridging occurring because we have posts still every eight foot. With a stick frame, your typical stick frame home has 24% thermal bridging. So right out of the bat, just without even doing anything differently, a post frame is going to be very thermally efficient from the, the side where you can get a true R value in these walls for the most part because of the lack of framing. Real quick, we're gonna take a moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video. And if you want to get free money, don't just go ahead and swipe away because I'm gonna tell you exactly how to do that. But first, I wanna kinda of say, if you guys are in business for yourself, if you're a freelancer, if you're making money from clients, you need to make sure that you have your own separate business account for that money to go into. Why, you might ask? Well, because it's gonna make your life much easier come tax time, and it's gonna protect you in the long run from potential liabilities. So with that being said, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, and it is North One. North One is a business banking platform and it is built for small businesses and freelancers. And what I mean by that is that everything about North One was designed specifically to make banking and money management easier for us. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I am a busy person and knowing that I don't have to step foot in a physical bank to do any of my banking business makes me extremely happy. It literally took me three minutes maybe to go online, set up an account, get approved, and then I had a virtual card instantly to start buying business purchases, and I was sent this physical copy of a card as well. 
The beautiful thing is that with North One, I can do ACH transfers, wire transfers, direct deposits, and I have access to 2 million plus ATMs to get cash anytime I need to. Now those are just a couple of the great features about North One. Some other features are that they integrate seamlessly with some of your favorite online platforms like Etsy, PayPal, Stripe. Uh, those are just to name a few. Literally the list is forever. And they have amazing technical support that can give you pretty advanced financial advice like how to plan for taxes. I mean, who else does that? And they have this pretty cool feature called envelopes and it is a great way to set aside money for your business. So for instance, I like to buy tools. Um, every time money comes into my account, I can easily set up a set of rules in my account through my envelopes for tool expenditures. You know, things that you are regularly gonna buy as a business owner, you can easily set up an envelope, set money aside, and then it's there when you need it. It's just another great way to budget your funds. Now I know you're probably asking me, but Kyle, all these great features, what is the, what's the catch? Like what's the price tag? It's 10 bucks a month. There's no hidden fees. In fact, North One is extremely transparent. The $10, that's all you're gonna pay. You're gonna get all these features. I think just having the ability to send ACH transfers is worth the 10 bucks a month. Now, if you guys wanna give North One a try, check out all these great features. I'm gonna put a link down below in the description. If you use that, you're gonna get a free $10 credit once you've opened and funded your account. So big thanks to North One for sponsoring this. I think it's a great idea to always have a separate business and checking account. So if you don't have it, use the link down below, get your free money. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and get back to the video. Let's keep moving because we we're talking about electrical. I just thought that was important to note because I think there's a lot of confusion from people. Um, we do this two by six interior girt just for added strength. You could probably do two by four. We've done it before and it's been fine. I just feel like you get one chance. You're not reframing these walls. Just put the two by six. It's marginally more money and it will be much more sturdy uh, when this is sheet rocked. So now we've got this air control layer, right? If we were doing the stick frame, this would be, the drywall would be getting drywalled right over top of this. It would be tight to this. And anytime the drywaller had to cut uh, a hole somewhere, he's gonna potentially puncture this. Because we have our interior girt, which is just, it's innate to a post frame. This is the way we do all of our structures. Um, we now have this service cavity and you can see now that the electrical is ran, all this conduit, all these boxes, everything is mounted inside this SEGA air control layer. So that means that if we do our job detailing it with all the tapes, nobody's going to puncture it. I mean, obviously accidents could happen and there are a couple spots in this build that I'm gonna show you where it did get punctured for piping and how we detailed that. But imagine having to detail every box behind this where it penetrates, every window, every pipe, whatever, this is, infinitely easier for us. Now I will say my client was dead set on using conduit. We don't have to use conduit where I am at. We can use Romex and it is like 10 times easier if you would have used Romex than conduit. But to be honest, they got it all done. Um, you'll notice above me, so you can see here, you can see that those lights are ran inside the service cavity because we dropped it down with an inch and a half. So it was a little bit of a pain for my client. He and an electrical buddy did all the electrical and they, uh, they said it wasn't impossible. They got it all done, but it was definitely a little bit tricky because they had to go up and under some of the trusses. But let me take you over to a spot where they had to go through um, our air control layer. And I'll show you what we did because it, it was a pain, but it was limited to a very small area. This is an area that it was inevitable somewhere that the electrician had to either go up into the attic space through the Myrex and over into this other section of the building because we've got, remember, we've got like a T in its two separate buildings, um, which I would say, guys, it, this is an entire build series. So make sure if you haven't already, you can go back and watch from the beginning how this was built and some of this stuff might make more sense. Um, but what happened was you can see we've got these pipes. These are all up into the service cavity of the ceiling coming from the electrical box and they're feeding all the way over that way. Some of them go this way, some of them go that way and they're going everywhere, right? The point is you can see we had to puncture the air control layer and get pipes through this area. It's not that big of a deal. You, the goal for us was to limit the amount of times we went through that 
but with the uh, Sega Rasan, it has like a flexible nature to it. And I just pieced in uh, a bunch of tape. No doubt, it's probably not perfect. The point is though, to do the best you can. And then we're gonna be doing a blower door test here hopefully very soon. So if that's something you guys are interested in, because we did one on our last barn dominium, it was a spray foamed home. We ended up scoring a 0.34 without any real building science knowledge or thought that went into it. Now this is a totally different project. We're not using spray foam as a cheat way to get a nice high air control layer, I guess, value. We did all the work with the rock wool in the wall, which is very dense and slows down air. And then we added the Sega Myrex. So with the blower door that's gonna be coming, if we have issues, in fact, I already know the electrician did some holes that he then detailed with some tape that we left him. And we're gonna probably have to redo that because it looks, it looks good, but it's probably not as good as we want. And when we do that blower door test before the drywall goes up, we're gonna be able to, you know, draw negative air into this building by pressurizing it from the outside in and we're going to be able to see if there's air being pulled into any of these joints and if it is we can detail it at that moment but the point is this is going to happen you're going to get some areas where you're going to puncture we've got plumbing vents that will go out through the ceiling and because we have the rock wool in the attic we'll be able to just move the rock wool tape that joint where it goes through the the, the ceiling myrex and then we're completely air sealed again. So the cool thing is, as you can see here, look at this. This is a cavity where all of this piping is going and it's all on the inside of this air control and vapor control layer, in essence, giving us a, a very well sealed uh, home that I'm actually very anxious about doing the blower door test because I hope we did good and I, I can't wait to see what it is. So definitely if you guys are interested, hit that subscribe button. Now's a great time to take two seconds hit it, I'd greatly appreciate it. And then you can make sure that you get notified maybe when, uh, when we do this blower door test, because I'm thinking we've been calling this the best house. And a lot of these things we're talking about is because I think post frame lends itself to a very cost effective way to achieve a lot of high quality details to get a very well built home. But let's go ahead and we'll talk about this next question that you guys have had. All right, now I know what you guys are gonna say. We just got done talking about how airtight we are trying to make this home. And that brings up a lot of questions and I've, I've been listening to them, I've been reading to them. And the nice thing about the Sega Myrex is that it is a smart vapor barrier system. It is not a house wrap. A lot of people assume that we're putting house wrap up here and we're gonna be trapping moisture in the wall. It's not a poly. So if you're using a poly vapor barrier, it is great at keeping moisture from moving through that poly and going out to the cold surface of your exterior. The problem is if you do get moisture inside your wall cavity, poly does not allow it to dry inwards. The Sega Myrex does. Now, if you were to take a look at this Sega Myrex, it says blank side facing the insulation. The reason it does that is because it is more permeable coming this way than it is going out. So that's gonna allow moisture to come out of the wall cavity it's gonna dry the wall cavity out if you do get moisture, but it's not gonna allow moisture to go into the wall cavity. So I wanted to answer that. We are not gonna have moldy walls because we have a permeable weather logic on the exterior that is gonna allow the wall cavity to dry to the outside. And we have Myrex on the inside, which is gonna allow the wall cavity to dry to the inside, depending on the seasons and the conditions, both inside and outside. All right, another thing that people have asked is, what about your plumbing? Where's that gonna go? And how do you, you know, detail the outside walls? Well, first off, we don't run any plumbing in an exterior wall. Everything is on the inside. As you can see here, I'm standing in a bathroom. We've got two sink plumbing, um, you know, pipes. We've got our, our, our drain waste vent over here. We've got our hot water, cold water. We got a shower, we got a toilet. Everything is sub slab. So it's all done before we pour the concrete. And only thing that we have to penetrate through uh, the ceiling air control layer or vapor control layer is a couple vent pipes that will be very easy to detail. All right, so we're standing in the, well, this is like the Jack and Jill bathroom. We've got a shower, toilet, and this is the vent fan that we're gonna be installing. Now, something that we thought about was, I've done this a couple times where the vent fan gets installed. If you don't have proper 
insulation above the attic space where that pipe goes out and goes to your wall or your roof, wherever it's going, you can form condensation because warm air can go in that vent fan and then condensate in the cold attic. So what we're gonna do here is we're actually with a 10 foot ceiling, we're gonna drop this ceiling down and we're gonna install the, the vent fan for the bath inside of our air control layer. That's gonna afford the, the pipe to stay in the same temperature as the house is and only have to go through the wall where we can easily detail it and go right outside. So I think that makes sense to you guys. Without having to put all of our venting up into the attic, I think it's gonna allow a much better end result with the vent fan. I'm curious, do you guys think that's a good idea? Have you guys seen that before? Um, it's an idea that somebody gave me, so I'm not taking credit for this to be like our thing, but uh, I think it's a great way to do this detail. All right, now here's a good example of what this is gonna look like with drywall because this is where the boiler is gonna get mounted, I think actually Monday. So just a couple days from now, they're gonna be mounting the boiler here for the radiant heat. So the drywaller came in, mounted some drywall that way, it doesn't have to get done later once everything's mounted. I think that's smart. We always try to think ahead. Um, but this can, I can show you a couple things. A lot of people were saying, okay, you spend all that time doing the Myrex and then you're gonna nail all of your framing to it. Isn't that just gonna defeat the purpose and have a ton of nail holes? Well, you can see right here, this is tape that we put on the framing for the Myrex. Then we frame over it with our service cavity, our two by six girt. These nails are penetrating through this tape. Is it a perfect seal? Probably not, but I can promise you that with the compression of the framing to framing with the Myrex through it, and then this tape that is sitting here, you're gonna have such a small amount of air leakage, it's not even an issue. And then once the drywall's in, you can see now, I can put my hand back in here, the screws are not gonna be puncturing the Myrex. It's going to be only framed or installed to this framing and any box, this box right here, when the drywall goes over, the drywaller is gonna take his roto zip and he's gonna router out this box and this will stay completely intact, no damage to it. So once again, I think it's very easy to see. Now this is a, an example of my electrician doing, I think the best he could, he punched this pipe in to go into, this is the garage wall. He wanted to get some wiring into the garage right here. This is probably good enough if we really wanted to, we could squirt some like liquid flash around here and it's gonna be great. But this is an area that I will remember. And when we do our blower door test, we'll come by with a little bit of smoke and see if this is really drawing much air in at all. All right, one final thing we're gonna talk about is, I know a lot of you have been in the comments saying that house is gonna to be too tight. It's not gonna be able to get fresh air in and it's gonna be bad for mold and the people inside aren't gonna get fresh air. Well, that would be true if you don't implement something such as an ERV or an HRV, which if you don't know what those are, those are basically bringing in fresh air from the outside and they're, they're either conditioning it or they're not conditioning it. So an ERV is good for our climate because we have a colder climate and it's going to reduce the moisture when it comes in and out. It's going to not let the moisture leave the house, depending. You know, there's tons of different systems out there, out there but the point is, Yes, if you detail your walls and your ceiling and your envelope properly so that you have a nice airtight home, you need to then bring fresh air into the home. And I know people are gonna say, well, what's the point? Why spend the money to make your house airtight only to cut a hole in it and to bring in that fresh air? Well, that's because you can control the air that comes in. If, it's a, if there's a wildfire outside, your ERV can be smart enough to sense the, the crappy quality air and to not let that air in your house. If your air is leaky and a skunk is outside spraying your dog, you're gonna smell those smells inside of your house. You're going to be getting the dirt and dust that's blowing through the air into your wall cavity. So when you go remodel it 20 years from now, it's gonna be dirty and full of you know, dust and pollen and allergens. With a nice tight air controlled system like this, you're not going to get that. But you do need to make sure that you bring in fresh air and then you can filter it and do it properly. I have no clue why people say you want your, your house to breathe and be um, leaky and just let that air come in. There's actually no benefit to that. Energy prices are higher. Um, air quality is probably less desirable than it used to be. So we wanna control where our air comes from, how much it comes in, and we wanna keep our wall cavities nice and tight 
and using the right systems, they're gonna breathe in and out, which is gonna allow them to dry, and you're gonna be okay. So I hope this video answered a lot of the questions that I've been seeing in the comments. I do read the comments, so if you have questions, by all means, drop them below. I will answer as many as I can. If there's something that you want covered that can be in a more in-depth video, let me know also and I can try to cover that. We're about done here on the interior of the best house. We're gonna be going outside. Spring is on the way and we're going to be doing all the smart side exterior. We're gonna be building some porches and I will definitely take you guys along for that as well. So hit the subscribe button once again if you wanna follow along. If you enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up and we'll catch you guys on the next video.